Hi, my name is Steve Rothstein, and I'm the executive director of the John F. Kennedy Library Foundation. I'm thrilled to be with all of you. I remember when I was seven years old, and I was playing on a porch in Brookline, the town we're in, making flags with a friend. And I heard on the radio that John Kennedy had been assassinated. His life, his legacy, and his death has affected my thinking since then. All of you know of John Kennedy, but I wonder if you know that, as was just said, that he went to another Brookline school about a mile down the road. Or if you know that his family is a gold star family, his older brother being killed in the Second World War. Or if you've enjoyed the National Seashore on Cape Cod, did you know that, that he was the one who generated the interest for the National Seashore? Or if you've seen important decisions being made in the Situation Room, or the leadership from the Navy SEALs, that both of those were created by John Fitzgerald Kennedy, our 35th president. It's important to know what he did, but it's really, let's look at what's happened since then. When he was in office, 75% of the people trusted government, 75%. Last year, before the recent campaign, it was 19%. Um, I, I wonder what the number would be now after the campaign we've all just been gone through. <laughs> I think this is heartbreaking. Because it doesn't say you believe in everything they're doing, but you trust government. Some people believe government should have a bigger role, some people a smaller role. Some people feel it should solve this problem or that. But if you don't trust government, it leads to everything else. So what I am so excited about is finding ways with all of you to turn this chart around. And to summarize President Kennedy's work in a TEDx would be presumptuous. To do it in a paragraph would be more so, in a sentence even more so. So I'm going to try to do it in an acronym, <laughs> CSI squared. Courage, service, innovation, and inclusion. Courage. During the Second World War, while he was on PT-109, his boat was rammed by the Japanese. Despite having a, a broken back, he saved two of his colleagues, swam three miles to an island, kept them alive until help could come. Later, when he was president, a young boy asked him, President Kennedy, how did you become a hero? And he said it was quite involuntary. They rammed my boat. Later in life, when he was a senator, he literally wrote the book on courage, Profiling Courage. And he identified eight senators from different parties that took courageous positions um, at the time, often having a big impact on their career. How many of you think that if we had more courage and more bipartisanship, our world would be better off today? Service. In his iconic uh, inaugural address, President Kennedy talked about, ask not what your country can do for you. Within 45 days later, the Peace Corps was started. This is a picture of President Kennedy welcoming the first class of Peace Corps volunteers in 1961, 750 of them, as they went off to 13 countries. Countries, some of them that we knew very little about, who had recently broken the yoke of colonial control. That was quite impressive for the volunteers and the president. Since that time, though, there have been over 220,000 people who have served in 140 countries. They've impacted not just those countries, but they've impacted their entire lives for service. Many countries have started their own version of Peace Corps. Our country later established AmeriCorps. Great nonprofits like City Year have been started. How many of you think that if we focus more on service, our society would be better? How many of you? <laughs> Innovation. This is a picture of President Kennedy looking at the Freedom 7 capsule with astronaut and later Senator John Glenn. When President Kennedy said he wanted to go to the moon, he wanted to beat the Russians, but he also wanted to harness the energy 
the technological expertise. And he set that bold goal of we're going to get to the moon by the end of the decade without knowing if he could reach it. In fact, in the Freedom 7 capsule, there was less computing technology than my iPhone. Not all iPhones, this iPhone. <laughs> um, and he was willing to take a risk. In fact, by being innovative, he was in fact willing to fail. But I can't begin to say it as well as the president did. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too. He was better at technology than I was. <laughs> How many of you think our society would be better if our public officials were willing to be, take innovative stands and even be willing to fail sometimes? How many of you? <laughs> Inclusion. This is President Kennedy meeting with civil rights leaders while he was in the White House. When he started, he had a lot of issues on his plate, and he didn't do as much in civil rights as he could have. But then he embraced it. He made it the moral issue of his time, not just integrating school lunch counters and schools and buses, but so much more. And he not just worked with folks in the civil rights movement, but he established the first national commission on the status of women and worked with people with disabilities, including those with intellectual disabilities. So how many of you feel that if we sought to include people, not to divide them, and bring them together, our society would be better? I hope that every president and prime minister, federal office holder, state office holder, mayor, city councilor, thinks about courage, service, innovation, and inclusion. But that's not enough. It's really up to all of us. I go to bed every night thinking about these. And honestly, there are many days I fall short. I haven't done enough in these areas. So next year, we'll be celebrating the 100th anniversary of John Kennedy's birth. And that birth happened about a mile from where we are now in Brookline, Massachusetts. So I hope that you'll join with me to think about what each of you can do to promote courage, to encourage service, to be innovative, and to include folks. Thank you.